Today we'll be discussing healthcare's clinical device maturity curve, uh, the process which can take three, five years over time, and ensuring that we're being successful during this journey together. So to start, we need to have a problem statement, right? We've got three major problems within the, the device management in the healthcare clinical organizations. We have the infrastructure challenges, correct? We have cyber physical devices that are not only on the network, but also connected to the environment, right? So they're not only uh, transferring information over the network, but they're also connected to patients. So we have to ensure that we manage these devices in such a way that we are uh, cognizant of that. We're, we're understanding of the unique nature of these devices. Uh, beyond that, we also have industry challenges. So we have the FDA approval process for these devices, and they tell us what we can and cannot do to them. So as far as security measures go, how they handle private data, PHI, we have to ensure that we're, again, cognizant of that fact as well. So when we're making decisions, uh, there's, there's no silver bullet, right? We can't install an endpoint agent like CrowdStrike or Sentinel-1 on these infusion pumps. We have to be careful, right? They have a limited amount of processing power. They're not running Windows 7. They're, they're not running Windows 10. So we have to use compensating controls in order to help protect these devices. Moving forward, we have the unique workflow challenges. So these are all clinical devices. They have unique clinical workflows made by these manufacturers. These intended workflows are crucial for healthcare delivery organizations because having the, the knowledge of them allows us to create security policies to help protect these devices and reduce the surface area of attack. So what this involves is the right people. So when we go through a maturity journey, we have to understand that uh, we, we need buy-in throughout the entire organization. So we need the network security team, we need the information security team, the security operations, clinical engineering, as well as the supply chain. This is the discover phase. You'll see a theme throughout this presentation. We have discover, assess, protect, monitor, and optimize. So as we move through this journey, we have an organizational plan that we're laying out with everybody. We need complete buy-in. And then as we move through each stage of the maturity journey, uh, it's a different team that we're gonna be working with. So during the assessment portion, we'll be working with the network security team to ensure that when we're building risk scores and risk profiles for these devices, we're, we're involving the right people to have a goal, have an end state. We want, we want to move our risk from 80 to 40 in three years, something of that nature. And then the protect phase, working with the networking team, the, the, again, the information security team, to ensure that we have a segmentation strategy, a policy enforcement strategy in place. So over time, again, we can hit goals hit our accelerators and ensure that we can reduce risk over time. And then we have the monitor portion, right? So as we install these policies, as we have a segmentation project, as we onboard new medical devices, we have to ensure that we have a playbook, a response, an understanding of how we go about uh, handling a new device so we can monitor them over time. As a, a new vulnerability comes out, such as log uh, log4j, um, back in, in December, uh, there was a, a massive impact on millions of devices around the world, and having a response to that is so crucial in, in helping the maturity of an organization. And then the optimized phase, ensuring that uh, when we're going through the supply chain, if we're looking at a, a, an inventory of a thousand infusion pumps and 200 of them are offline, we can't just go out and purchase another 200 medical devices. We have to ensure that they're actually lost or they're, they're not in our possession. If they're offline and hiding in a closet, we've got to find them. We gotta go under desks, we gotta look under cabinets, we gotta, we gotta find these devices to ensure that we're saving money during the procurement process and the life cycle management of these devices. So this is the operational ecosystem of Medigate. So what we're doing is taking the data from the assessment and discovery phase and empowering active solutions. Medigate is 100% passes, and if you look behind us, we have our technical partners with us at, uh, at HIMSS today. So we have CrowdStrike, Rapid7, Cisco, all these extremely powerful technologies that have these unique security uh, capabilities and, and empowerments to ensure that they can help reduce risk of these devices. And it's very telling to me as a channel engineer that they're here right now because they support us and we support them. So if you'd like to discuss any of these integrations, I'd happily have a conversation with anybody after this presentation. So let's talk about the maturity curve. Once again, we have discover, assess, protect, monitor, and optimize. So as we speak to the discovery portion, where we're putting a Medigate collection server on site, we're parsing traffic on site, we're taking a mirror image, we're dropping any protected health information to ensure that we're compliant with all HIPAA regulations. 
And then we're taking that data and we're creating uh, categorizations of these devices. We're being definitive and deterministic about these devices to ensure that when we profile them, we know exactly what they are. We know that this is an MRI made by GE. We know that this is an infusion pump made by Alaris. So once we have that data, that visibility and insights into these devices, we can have an understanding of what vulnerabilities can we correlate to them. Are they transmitting unencrypted PHI? What is the patch level of this device? Can we even update this device? Stuff of that nature. That then brings us into the assess portion, where we can then build a risk score, knowing that we have the, 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 the vulnerabilities, insights, how it's handling protected information, then we can score it, say this is a critical risk device, this is a high risk device. We now have a, a starting point, a baseline, to ensure that when we have an overall risk score of our organization, we have a goal and a target over time that we can achieve. Once we have that goal and an understanding of the risk of our environment, we can then move into the protect phase, where we're using network compensating controls in order to protect these devices. As I mentioned in the problem statement, we are unable to install endpoint agents. We can't manage these devices in a traditional way. So we have to use compensating controls with uh, partners like Cisco, uh, Checkpoint, firewalls, and NAC vendors in order to enforce the policies that Medigate recommends. I spoke to the workflow challenges as well. So again, understanding how the, the, these manufacturers intend these medical devices to be used is crucial in developing policies. If we need a, a certain protocol over a sort, certain port, we can enforce that at the NAC level. We can create access control lists to, again, reduce the surface area of attack. And this is where we see that cross, right? We, we move from maturity and risk, and we start increasing that maturity and reducing that risk. Because as we enforce policy, we see that reflected in the Medigate dashboard. We're able to go ahead and say, okay, this infusion pump moved from a critical risk to a medium risk, and, and that, that was our goal and that was our target. But now what? That's when we move into the monitor phase, where if there's a new vulnerability that's released for that infusion pump, we can go ahead and combat that. We have an understanding of what it needs, what it takes to go ahead and get that risk back down after we have already done a segmentation project or enforce policy on this device. And finally, the optimized portion. Now that we have all this granular data, the utilization, a, a, a understanding of how these devices are being used every day, I use the example of infusion pumps. We have 1,000 infusion pumps, uh, 200 of them are offline. We don't want to buy new ones, let's go find those. So again, that, that optim optimization, the operational efficiency piece, not having to spend millions of dollars on new devices is, is crucial in, in such a, a fast-moving healthcare world where every dollar matters. And the first thing we put up front is patient care. So we want to ensure that we have devices where they are, when they need to be, uh, and at the lowest cost, obviously. This is also very helpful for the procurement process, right? As we go through device lifecycle management for these medical devices, if I have the ability to not only look at my current device, but also compare it to another, I can go ahead and say, my, my Alaris infusion pumps have 14 vulnerabilities on them, while these Baxters that I'm looking to purchase have three. So what, what's the decision there? It's not only monetary, it, it's also being risk adverse. You don't want to inherit new risk into your environment when you have the data and the knowledge needed to make a better decision. So moving forward, again, the, the same theme, right? Discover, assess, protect, monitor, and optimize. You can see it broken down a little bit further here. So when we put the Medigate collection server on site, uh, we're, we're deploying that solution, we're doing data validity, building those device profiles. The assessment portion, taking risk and vulnerabilities into account, how it's handling that private information, giving it an overall risk score. And then the protect phase, right? We're building segmentation profiles, we're designing and enforcing policy, and then we're defining that segmentation strategy. And again, all with the right people. We need total organizational buy-in to achieve a maturity, right, within the, the healthcare delivery organization and help reduce that risk. And then we move into the, the monitor phase where we're having quarterly business reviews with all the key figureheads in these projects. We want to ensure that we're on track, we have playbooks ready when a new vulnerability comes out, we have a process for onboarding new clinical devices and the effect on the environment. And then finally, the optimized portion. Having a, uh, the goal of a clinical SOC is what we're looking for. We want to have a continuous 24-7 clinical SOC where we're managing these devices at a different level, a different plane. We want to ensure that everybody, once again, is, is extremely involved in this process and so we can achieve that device maturity. So uh, again, I want to thank everybody. My name is Trevor McGovern. I'm a, a channel engineer, engineer here at Medigate. 
if there's any questions, I'd happily field them. Uh, and, and thank you for your time, everybody. Really appreciate it.